It's official. This man is actually cursed. There is no other explanation for this. How is it even possible that the best striker on the planet goes over to the most domestically dominant team in the top European leagues and does not win the league with them? Science can't explain this. It really cannot. There is just simply no stopping Bayer Leverkusen it seems, winning games late on, winning in style and still unbeaten. It's the Chabi Alonso effect people, it just keeps working. Naturally, I have no hope anymore. No, no, no. After today's game, I do not need to tell you anything more. How many points behind are we? 13? Thomas Tuchel has given up and conceded defeat, and can you blame him? For the first time in 10 years, Borussia Dortmund have managed to beat Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena. It's the first time they've beaten them at all in the league since 2018. It's generational stuff. It really is the worst timeline for some. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tunasha. Really sorry for the recent absence. I've been working on stuff in the background which will come out in the near future hopefully. Plus, it was an international break so no harm done. The leagues have resumed and not much has changed really. Bayer Leverkusen are still absolutely walking the Bundesliga and honestly, I have no clue if anybody's going to be able to stop them. Actually, I do have a clue. Nobody will. I watched both them and Bayern Munich on Saturday and both matches surprised and excited for completely different reasons. Because of the title of this video and the thumbnail, I think a good place for us to start is with Bayern Munich. And I'm going to be honest with you, going into this match, I didn't foresee anything going wrong for Munich, anything in the way of negativity, just based on pure history alone. As I said in the intro, it's literally been 10 years since Dortmund lost one at the Allianz in the league. It's a match that seemed to be a foregone conclusion for so long before the actual date is scheduled on the calendar. Even when the stakes are high, in a couple of seasons this match has been a borderline title decider and for some reason it's always being played at the Allianz. It's always the same result. Just last season when it seemed as though Dortmund were just a few steps shy from winning the league, they went into this match leading the table and they lost 4-2. In 2019, after leading the pack for the majority of the season, Dortmund were in pole position with only 6 games remaining and Bayern battered them 5-0. Whether this match has severe consequence or not, Bayern Munich always just find a way to come out on top. And this time around, Dortmund aren't even in the title race. Granted, they are pushing for a top 4 and that seems like an interesting race in of itself, but still. It only took Karim Adeyemi 10 minutes to grab the first goal of the match. When this man turns on the pace, there are very few people that are going to be able to catch him. This was just yet another reminder of that. He went past Matthias de Ligt like he wasn't even there. Which begs the question, why is Matthias de Ligt of all people being left alone to deal with a player like Karim Adeyemi? Again, this wasn't a lucky win at all, Dortmund were really putting in the work in this one. Ian Madsen almost scored what would have been a goal of the season contender, taking the ball from deep in his own half and almost going all the way. Again, it was really easy for him to just glide past the Bayern defence there. Too easy. Also, Chelsea fans need some positivity in their life, so I think that at the very least they can take solace in the fact that this guy is looking sharp. All the same, in the grand scheme of things, I think we'd all be doing ourselves a favour by grounding ourselves in reality. Regardless of what happened in this match, even if Bayern Munich won, I don't think that would have done too much in terms of convincing you or me that Bayern were actually going to make any headway when it comes to the sizable lead that Leverkusen have created. But still, for this result, one that typically goes Bayern's way, to end up like this? If you believe in astrology, I believe this would be the equivalent of Mercury being in the microwave or whatever they call it. I I'm sorry, I, I never took the elective at uni, so... And of course we have Harry Kane being the unluckiest man in Germany. It was already going to be difficult to explain to my grandchildren that the best English player of his generation never won any silverware whatsoever for the first 14 years of his career. But now, I have to tell them that he never won anything after going to the team that practically never loses. And it's not even his fault. At the end of the day, Bayern Munich just simply have too many problems. Player egos are at an all-time high, with Joshua Kimmich dropping in form and consistently making headlines for disagreeing with the hierarchy of the club. We've spoken before about how certain players just don't really seem to care on the pitch at times. Thomas Tuchel doesn't seem to like anything about Bayern at the moment. The squad depth is strangely thin, and for a team known for their discipline, they've shown themselves to lack it on several occasions this season. 
Harry Kane is guilty of missing a couple of chances. I mean, he probably should have scored in the first half with a header at point blank and he could have had a penalty later on. But at the end of the day, he is human. And all the same, in reality, he is the best player in Bavaria by quite a large margin. 37 goals scored this season with 12 assists and 36 games overall. He is a monster. He's still playing out of his skin and has already bagged four hat-tricks in the league. It's too bad that his defense, which he has nothing to do with, is a shambles most of the time. They don't know how to deal with fast counters, their organization is non-existent most of the time. You know, it's a real shame. But at the very least, Harry Kane already knows what that feels like. Out of the DFB Pokal after losing to third division side Saarbrücken, just about out of contention in the Bundesliga with 7 games left to play, 13 points off the top. They face Arsenal in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and you know what, based on history this has not been a good match for the Gunners, but memes aside, Arsenal are the much better team right now and I would fancy their chances if I were them. Even if Bayern make it past the Gunners, they will have Real Madrid or Manchester City to deal with. And again, I don't see them making their way past either. Add on the fact that they lost the DFL Super Cup to RB Leipzig at the start of the season, and we realize that Bayern may go completely trophyless in a season for the first time in 12 years. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Thomas Tuchel is finished as Bayern manager. We've known this for some time that he is set to leave the club at the end of the season by mutual consent. How mutual the consent was is likely up for debate, but it is what it is. Bayern hasn't been Bayern for a while now. It is what it is. You know, firing managers mid-season, firing board members mid-season, and now announcing this Tuchel decision as early as they did, it's, it's more of an indicator of how disjointed they are right now. But realistically, this was the smartest thing they could have done, and probably a good thing too. It showed that they're not blind to the results and poor performances that the team had been putting up and that they're doing something about it. It also makes it so that the expectations of the season and what Bayern can actually achieve are downplayed to the maximum. What motivation does an outgoing manager and disgruntled players have to give their utmost on the pitch? Not much, is the answer. Plus, this allows them to publicly show that they're looking for a new manager without the media fiasco that they had last year. Like, let's be real, they're still going to get the media fiasco, but I think it'll be slightly better. There's going to be a real shakeup at the early ends this season, in the summer, and I'm really interested to see what they do and who they bring in, what they shuffle around. If we flip the script and look at Leverkusen, we'll be met with a team that is virtually unstoppable and in no way affected by any jinxes or things of the sort. 39 games unbeaten with an 87% win rate. Against Hoffenheim, Leverkusen attacked like they have done all season, switching the ball from left to right really, really quickly, pressing really high. It was, it was fantastic football, but it just didn't seem like it was working. The ball wouldn't cross the line for them. Meanwhile, Hoffenheim took the lead after 33 minutes and looked like they were on course to keep it, but with two goals in two minutes, Leverkusen flipped the game on its head. It was at this moment that I realized that cosmic forces were at play here. It's probably the whole um, uh, microwave type thing. Outside of this victory, it's been a very busy week for Xabi Alonso. He's gone on record to fully commit his near future to Bayer Leverkusen, which makes the most sense out of any decision. I think it's easy for all of us to forget that this is quite literally his first ever full season as a head coach, and he's only 42. He's in it for the long haul. And when he's good and ready, you have to imagine that his next move will either be Liverpool, Bayern Munich, or Real Madrid. All teams that he played for, sure, but they also just make the most sense. Liverpool and Bayern Munich are definitely going to need new managers, that's a certainty. And as for Real Madrid, if Carlo Ancelotti looks at the Bernabeu strangely, who knows what Florentino Perez could do. And when he is good and ready to leave, it's going to be interesting to see which teams have vacancies available. By that point, his profile will probably be high enough that teams will be willing to wait for him or just create the vacancies themselves. For the time being, he seems to be having a lot of fun in Leverkusen and I think they should just, they should bask in the moment right now. If Leverkusen play their cards right, they could end up breaking the highest points tally ever recorded in the Bundesliga, 91 points in 2013. Now I'm not saying they will or they won't, but what I am saying is that this will be quite a sight won't it? Not for Harry Kane though. And there we have it. Let me know what you guys think about the Bundesliga title race this time. Again, sorry for the absence. I've got more videos coming this week. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're having a great day. Cheers and I'll catch you in the next one.